John Wayne Gacy, a famous person from Illinois, gained notoriety for his criminal activities by dressing as a clown at community events. Despite a turbulent upbringing, he maintained close ties with his mother and siblings. In his adult life, Gacy managed fast food restaurants and projected the image of a family man, but still lived a secret life of crime. He began committing serious crimes against young people, often luring them with money and substances. His criminal behavior eventually led to his arrest and conviction in an assault case. As a result, he was sentenced to prison and served part of that sentence. During this period, his marriage ended and he faced personal losses. After his release, due to a failure in the justice system, Gacy's past convictions were not fully disclosed, allowing him to start over. With the help of his mother, he bought a property and later lived there until his arrest. Gacy remarried, started a construction business, and immersed himself in local community activities, often appearing in a clown suit. However, he continued his criminal activities, which escalated into a series of felonies during what he called his cruise years. He concealed the consequences of these actions in various places, including his residence and a nearby river. The case of a young pharmacy worker led authorities to uncover the extent of Gacy's crimes, and multiple victims turned up on his property and in the river. Convicted of numerous crimes, Gacy was sentenced to death in 1980. During his incarceration, he began painting, mostly depicting clowns, and sold these works of art. He showed no remorse until his execution in 1994. For his last meal, Gacy requested a dozen deep-fried shrimp, a bucket of KFC's original recipe chicken, french fries, a pound of strawberries, and a bottle of Diet Coke. John Wayne Gacy, a notorious serial killer, was convicted of Pine 33 murders, primarily targeting teenage boys. His gruesome crimes shocked the nation and left a dark stain on Chicago's history. Gacy led a Pine double life. By day, he was a successful contractor and active community member, while by night, he committed sadistic torture murders. He lured young men to his home under the pretense of homosexual liaisons or employment opportunities. Once there, he would restrain them, strangling or choking them to death. The bodies of most victims were discovered in the crawl space beneath Gacy's middle-class suburban home. The evidence revealed a chilling contrast between his public persona and his horrifying actions. One pivotal moment came when our 15-year-old Robert P. Stey disappeared after leaving work at a pharmacy where Gacy had recently completed renovations. This led to police surveillance and the discovery that other teenage employees, Gregory Godzik and John Butkovich, had also vanished. A search warrant was executed, and officers found high three lime-covered bodies. In the crawl space, Gacy cooperated, indicating the precise locations of certain victims. In total, Warmu 29 bodies, E were recovered on his property, with an additional four found in a nearby river. Despite his initial confession, Gacy later recanted and did not testify during his trial. His unsuccessful insanity defense left no doubt about his guilt. The case remains a haunting reminder of the darkness that can lurk behind seemingly ordinary facades. The 33 indictments against John Wayne Gacy provide a chilling account of one of the most prolific and notorious murderers in U.S. history. Gacy, a construction contractor, led a sea double life. By day, he was a well-known figure in his community, engaging in political work and charitable causes. However, behind the facade of the friendly clown who entertained children at performances, Gacy committed heinous crimes. In 1978, the law finally caught up with him. The mother of a young man who had disappeared after applying for a job with Gacy alerted the police. A search warrant was obtained, leading to the discovery of 27 corpses buried beneath Gacy's house. Two more bodies were found under the garage and driveway. Gacy later confessed to disposing of four additional corpses in the De Plaines River. Gacy faced wire 33 murder indictments. In March 1980, he was found guilty. Judge Louis B. Garipo sentenced him to death. Although the circuit court ruling was appealed, the Supreme Court of Illinois upheld the death sentence, which was carried out by lethal injection on Saitoy, May 10, 1994, Chow. Eight of Gacy's victims remain unidentified, and it is believed that there may be other victims whose identities were never discovered or whose bodies were buried elsewhere. The ninth unidentified victim, known as Case File 959 Ua Mill, was finally identified in June 2007 as Timothy McCoy from Nebraska. McCoy was Gacy's first known and identified victim.
Gacy's life also intersected with the world of film. In War 1992-2, Brian Dennehy portrayed him in the television film To Catch a Killer. Additionally, the feature film All Gacy, released in 2003 co, starred Mark Holton as John Gacy. During his Otsfoftor teen years on death row Shromier Waum, Gacy turned to toil painting. His favorite subject? Portraits of clowns. He saw his clown persona as an alter ego, once wryly remarking that a clown can get away with murder. His paintings included depictions of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, bah, as well as fellow serial killers Jeffrey Dahmer and Ed Gunn. These artworks have become some of the most famous examples of serial killer art. After Gacy's execution, many of his paintings were auctioned off. Prices ranged from 195 fies for an acrylic painting of a bird to B. Dying 500 sars for a portrayal of dwarfs playing baseball against the Chicago Cubs. Some individuals purchased Gacy's paintings with the intention of destroying them. In June 1994, a bonfire in Naperville, Illinois witnessed the burning of 25 of these macabre artworks, attended by 300 people, including family members of nine victims. Interestingly, the privately owned Osas National Museum of Crime and Punishment houses two Gacy paintings. One of them, titled Baseball Hall of Fame, bears the signatures of 46 members of the Baseball Hall of Fame, including legends like Duke Snyder, Checker, Willie Mays, Joe DiMaggio, Saitiais, Mickey Mantle, Chaigre, Ted Williams, Saint Sandy Koufax, Yogi Berra, and Roy Campanella. Even the President Richard Nixon unknowingly signed this work, unaware of its dark origins. These eerie glimpses into Gacy's mind serve as a haunting reminder of the complexities of human nature and the darkness that can reside within seemingly ordinary individuals. Gacy remained a terrible person until the end never showing remorse for his crimes, and saying, kiss my ass, as his final statement. He was executed in 1994 by lethal injection.